Guys, meet Ariel. Ariel is a ballerina, and he will show you how simple it is with brain picking to create his personal learning website. So let's start. Ariel is logged in in brain picking, and the first thing he does is he selects the domain where his website will be. What you see in the background right now is a blueprint that he can easily customize. He immediately understands what he needs to do and starts by uploading his logo. This logo will define his personal brand. Once the logo is up there, and you see how beautiful it looks, he moves on to the next step, which is uploading a background image. This image is the first thing his students will see when they land on his website. So he really needs to impress them. He selects the image, and once it's up there, please tell me if this does not impress you. He writes a few words about himself and his teaching vision, and he's done. With three simple clicks, he gave a great look and feel to his learning website. But Ariel is missing the most important thing, which is his content, his classes. He could start now uploading all his videos one by one, but Ariel already has a YouTube channel. With brain picking, he imports his entire YouTube channel with one single click. Isn't that cool? His playlists become courses, and each of the videos, different lessons. Ariel decides now to add an extra lesson, a lesson that he has not shared on YouTube. He calls it Digging the Dancing Queen, selects not to charge for this lesson, and describes it as you can dance, you can jive, having the time of your life. He selects the category Classic Dancing and adds the video. Once he added the video, and the video starts processing, he enhances the lesson with quizzes, notes, and additional documents, like presentations. For this particular lesson, he decides to add a note. Use your ballet shoes if you want to stand on your toes. And he synchronizes this note with the video's timeline, so the note will pop up when Ariel wants it to pop up. And he's done. He's ready to save the lesson, turn on his course, and go to his homepage. And there it is. The videos are being loaded, and you will see how beautiful it looks and how simple it was. But brain picking is not only about being beautiful and simple. Brain picking is also about being smart and interactive. Meet Mark. Mark is in Argentina right now. Hi, Mark. In three weeks, he has a father-daughter ballet recital, but Mark doesn't know how to dance. And unfortunately, he doesn't have the time to go to a dancing studio. So Mark goes online and joins Ariel's website. He selects the lesson that he wants to take and goes into that classroom. Brain picking is not only about watching a video. Brain picking offers him the opportunity to be part of an interactive learning community. He starts watching the lesson, and in order not to forget any of the new steps he's learning, he takes notes. He creates a new note and writes, bend your knees if you want to do a plié. He saves the note, and he can share it with his other participants. He continues watching the lesson, and now he has a question. What is Ariel doing right now? He asks the question. This question is tagged into the video's timeline and broadcasted to all other participants, so anyone can give him an answer, no matter if they're online or offline. Mark's questions get also posted, posted on his other social networks, for example, on Facebook, so his friends can see what he's learning and might be able to help him. All questions and answers become part of the video, so future viewers will see them when they join the lesson. Brain picking clearly works for ballerinas, but it also works for Michael Fry, a landscape photographer based in Yosemite that wants to sell his tutorials on photography, and also for Marshall Goldsmith, a leadership coach that wants to build a community of coaches based on his technique. And also for Leonardo Perez Nieto, a Mexican artist that has an art school and now wants to go digital in order to reach a broader audience worldwide. So join Brain Picking today and start sharing your knowledge with the world. This is, a, um, this is a really interesting creation tool. Uh, how does, does it help at all in terms of you know, marketing, you know, going out and acquiring students, that sort of thing? Okay, first, 
they have their own website, and what we build inside these websites is a community that they can, in, they can bring all these students, uh, and the marketing tools are, for example, they can customize the SEO because now it's their website. They can organize competitions, for example, with likes. They get discounts in order to make the, their lectures attractive. They can also do affiliate programs in order to market their website. And when the students, they join the brain picking community and they become brain pickers, they have access to all the websites that have been created with brain picking. So what we're trying to follow there is the idea of Tumblr, that you are part of a community and you can see different blogs, in this case, different websites, and you can share different courses from the different websites. So we're building a community behind this individual so, website. So the, the universe of you know, creators on something like Tumblr is massive, right? In order to get a large enough community to, to sort of you know, have that kind of scale, you know, you're talking about lot, I mean, lots and lots of educators, essentially, right? Not everybody is a Marshall Goldsmith, right? Or an Ariel's you know, dance studio. I mean, you know, they, n people don't, there's, no, there's only a limited number of people that really you enjoy dance, that. Right? I do, yeah, I'm, I'm right? actually a student of Ariel's. Um, <laughs> you, you know, how do you, I mean, right, how do you get that, that scale? I understand the sort of, you know, within the system doing that marketing or bringing your own students into the system, but how does it, you know, how do, how do I, as a, you know, uh, I'm a, you know, a novice at, at dancing, you know, so how do I get my coursework off the ground and, and build an audience? Well, you're asking how are we getting the first lecturers to come and join? I think that's part of it, but yeah, I mean, I think yeah. it's sort of the more the long-term growth. Yeah, okay, right now what we're doing is um, finding uh, opinion leaders, people who already have knowledge, already have some content online, also small institutes, um, uh, that want to put their own content online we, um, and we contact them directly. We are creating their sites for them and then we show them, hey, look what we created for you. Look how cool it is. Look at the community that you can create. Uh, that's what we're doing right now. Of course, uh, in order to scale, like you, like you said, uh, we, will need, uh, um, we will need it to be more organic. So we are also expecting our social network within, within the communities to start spreading the, the rumor um, we have, uh, of course, it's, it's every time you ask a question, every time you answer a, a question, it shows up on your other social networks. People can see what you're doing. Maybe they are interested. Maybe they want to go to that course. Maybe they want to create their own, their own website. And that's the idea. Yeah. Uh, so first off, um, I, I think you built a beautiful product. I know Jay Cal is going to start taking his ballet lessons, Absolutely. I, I think, from you now. Uh, we were trying to build something like this for business videos. You know, I think what you're building is a lot like Udemy, uh, which came out of a Deo's program. I, I think one of the things you need to be careful on is a lot of times what these content creators are looking for is they don't have audience. So they're going to the place where there's already audience, which is YouTube. And so you're now creating a place where they have to reinvent their entire audience. That's tough. That's hard. And I think you've built a really delightful product to start. It looks really neat. I want to try it myself. I'll put a course on there. Uh, but you either need to have a product that's so amazing that it's just going to virally start to spread, which I hope that that's the case, or B, you really need to get obsessive about how you're going to drive users there. Otherwise, I think you're going to have a hard time getting folks to put their brain pickings on brain picking. Uh, as Ariel said, the first people we're contacting right now is people that already have content, for example, on YouTube. So they, it's easier for them to bring them to their new website and then manage their community so they can enhance the learning experience, not just the video, and we are but, the, but the, it's on YouTube because that's where people yeah, are, exactly. right? So you may have some features that YouTube don't, but ultimately they want access to all those people. You can't yeah. discount that. Yeah. So are you guys building any tools out to help these people make money, or it's more you just kind of helping them pour over from YouTube? And it's I mean, it's no. like you guys don't really stress much on the e-commerce tools and stuff like that. So they, they can also uh, they can also make money with this. So they can decide if they want to charge for the videos or not. Of course, if the video is already public on YouTube or Vimeo, they cannot charge for that content. That's not fair. But they can upload their content to our servers, and they can charge for the content they have. Can they and break that up? Can they have like three of the YouTube videos are free, exactly. and the other 12 are paid? Exactly. So they can decide, even with that, within one course, they can have some lessons that are free and some lessons that they have to pay. Yeah, as Jason said, I think it's going to be really hard for you to get the free people to come over to your platform unless they're like big enough in the free world and they want to start making money. Otherwise, yeah, they're going to keep it on YouTube because then they're just inflating their ego and they're putting stuff out there for people to watch or just trying to share 
their, you know, their, their knowledge and stuff like that. So. Yeah, and that's why we are also focused on um, small institutes. Uh, for example, just the guys that were here first uh, with their uh, um, uh, the, yeah, the, the sensor stuff. Yeah. So they said, "Yeah, we have this amazing product. We want we want to uh, to educate our people with it, and we are look, we are actually looking for the pl platform where we can educate uh, educate our, our users, where we can uh, control the community." And we were backstage introducing it to them, and said, "Well, that's perfect for us." And we have many other institutes like that that not necessarily are looking for the viral effect, but it's exactly right for them because to create such a website, it's, ve it's very expensive. So that's what we're I think your I think your demo kind of misguided us a little bit um, because the more you talk, the more interesting it gets. Yeah. And having a, a silly, I, I'm going to do um, dancing, my own video that I have on YouTube, make a course out of it and charge $2 for it, it's kind of like, oh, OK, you know, that's not that interesting. Once you start talking about you know, distributing real content, um, having, you know, even, I don't know, uh, you know, franchisees being trained through this, all of a sudden you become a real business and a real, you know, a real, if anyone wonders in San Francisco at noon, there's always on Tuesdays an alarm uh, um, testing it. Uh, <laughs> I set my watch usually. Um, so I would, I, would, I would just, you know, really look at the use case for this. I, I also think there is, you know, there's a tremendous amount of great content that is not online today. You know, when you, uh, then once you become you know, a parent, for example, you start looking for swim lessons and you don't want to do the YouTube swim lessons. You actually want to buy the DVD of the swim lessons on Amazon. And they don't exist online. They don't have a lot of good outlets. Um, so I just feel like I spent the first three minutes going like, oh, God, another video, something creation for this like you, Udemy. Um, and then talking to you is like, well, there's actually maybe a little more than that. Yeah. I actually suspect that, did you guys start as like a site builder? Is that where you kind of come from? Yeah, like it felt like that in the pitch. Is it true? Yeah. Well, yeah, the, our background is the, yeah, development. Right? So yeah. you, you really led with that, and yeah. it was like, that's not the value. The value is in the distribution yeah. of the classes and the, the discoverability of it. So I, I would show more of that up front. OK. Sure. OK. Well done. Let's hear it for brand picking. <laughs> Next up is Revolve, which is a 